Well, let's start off, Steve, by talking about the news itself. Um, a reorganization plan of what you guys are calling roughly $10 billion in value that includes 100% of the company's assets, $4.275 billion from the Sacklers. Give me a sense as to where we are at this very moment in terms of the likelihood of this actually getting through the bankruptcy court and the money getting into the hands of the states and the providers of services to people who are suffering from addiction. Okay, well, David, as you know, we've been uh, 18 months now in the bankruptcy process. All of that has been consumed by various uh, discussions, uh, debates, uh, and so on among the various parties as to what to do and how to divvy up the proceeds. We've gotten to a point where we now have a substantial majority of all the creditor groups supporting this plan, and that's why we have decided to take it to a filing of a plan of reorganization. Now, that's not the finish line. What that means is we now have to produce a disclosure statement to describe it in full and then go out and solicit all the votes so that we can get final confirmation. Well, on that note, let me come back a few months to a letter uh, that was sent by 25 state AGs to, uh, to then uh, U.S. Attorney General uh, Bill Barr. Where are those states that were opposed to this provision of the agreement that you are proposing in which um, Purdue would become essentially a public trust that would still operate and the proceeds from that would actually go towards, uh, towards many of the same things that the, that the money is going towards initially? Where are those states in opposition and how do they figure into the process from here, Steve? Well, we've been talking to them continuously throughout this process, and we will continue to do so you know, starting uh, this morning uh, to try and get their votes. Up until now, there's been a lot of debate about you know, what are the different uh, formats you'd like to see, how much money do you want to see involved, and so on. And from now we've come to a conclusion, this is it. This is what a majority of the creditor groups support. This is what we are filing as our plan. And now it's just simply an up or down vote among all the states. And I am confident we will get sufficient votes that we will get to confirmation from here. Okay. What gives you that confidence? The confidence is that, you know, the discussion is no longer about would you like something slightly different or not. The question is, this is it. This is what has the uh, support of a majority of the uh, creditor groups, and moreover, more important, if we don't vote yes on this and instead go back to a endless litigation, then the chance to get $10 billion into the hands of the states and communities and victims will have disappeared and the money will all be consumed in ongoing litigation. So that's a, because that's the stark alternative reality, I am now confident that we will get the vote we need. And uh, why not accede to the demands of those states in their petition to, uh, to former Attorney General Barr and sell the remaining assets as opposed to transferring them to a public trust, which would still operate and still, frankly, be making the drug at the heart of this, OxyContin? Why not follow what they want as part of this plan? Bec the reason that we are proceeding with the plan of record is, A, we have this support of the majority of the creditor groups because they understand that is what will best create value rather than trying to do a fire sale of the assets at this moment in time. Nonetheless, uh, the uh, plan uh, calls for reviews of that uh, long term. Uh, the possibility is that the company might get sold. But in the near term, this is the best way to create value to go to the victims of the opioid abuse problem. Yeah. Um, and the Sacklers family's role here. Uh, originally, and I remember when you and I spoke 18 months ago, I guess, early on when you took, took over this uh, not enviable task, um, they were at $3 billion originally. They're now at, I think it's $4.5 billion. $225 million of that is going to the DOJ, but a $4.5 billion overall contribution from the family. What do you say to those who say that's simply still not enough uh, and that they should be paying more and should not be released from 
future legal proceedings, future liability? Well, this has been a lengthy debate over the last 18 months. And yes, the Sacklers moved from their initial $3 billion offer to what is now $4.5 billion. And the question is, you know, how much longer do you want to keep debating it? Or is now the time to take the money and use it for a valid purpose, as opposed to continuing to have this legal battle? So how much leeway does the bankruptcy judge have here? I'm sorry, how much? How much leeway? What, uh, the, the role of the, bank, of the judge here. Uh, what can said judge decide here? Uh, how much power do they have in terms of determining where these proceedings uh, end up? The judge has very little power to change the deal. He can only uh, get people organized and get the vote organized and so on. But you need a substantial majority of the claimants in order for the judge to approve it. The judge cannot go off on his own and do something else. Right, but you, you say you have that support right now. You have the support at least of enough creditors, right, to essentially cram down, if, if you want to call it that? I, no, I wouldn't call it that. The, the answer is that we have a substantial majority of the creditor groups. We'd, you know, we'd like to get uh, all creditor groups to be in full support of this. I don't know if we'll get that far. We're going to be working on that for the next uh, couple of months to try and get as many votes as possible as broad-based support as we can. But the fact is that re even if one particular state votes no, they will still get the benefit of the deal, assuming we have a substantial majority. What the judge needs is a substantial majority in order to proceed to confirmation. OK, but I'm trying to understand, I guess, the differential between the states and the creditors, or I know they're obviously all, much of them the same, but you need more than 25 states to say yes to this deal for it to happen. I am confident we will get sufficient states. It's, it's a big legal question as to exactly how many of the states and of the various creditor groups, cities, counties, Indian tribes, and so on. This is a very complex litigation. I do not know personally what the actual requirement is. We, we will need uh, further support and we expect to get it now that we're down to the yes or no question, as opposed to just debating as to what somebody else would like. Right. OK. And so uh, make the pitch for me and, and for our viewers here then, Steve, as to why the state should, why this is the right deal, why this is the best deal they can hope for. This is a milestone in public health history. Never before have you seen this amount of money, $10 billion, being devoted to opioid abatement. And it's only available through this plan, assuming we can get it approved. And I think when people think about it, they will come around to the notion, well, I might have liked something slightly different, but this is certainly a lot better than going into endless, costly litigation that may end up with no proceeds going to anybody. And as opposed to the 98 tobacco settlement, for example, where a lot of the money did not end up obviously going towards trying to help people stop smoking. Is there a guarantee in some way that this money will actually end up doing what you're saying it's going to do? Yes, we paid a lot of attention to the criticism of that 1998 tobacco settlement, where a lot of the money was diverted to other governmental purposes other than uh, smoking cessation programs. So we have designed this program where the money all goes initially to a national opioid abatement trust and from that, it's distributed to all the various creditor groups, but under a guaranteed commitment that the money will only be used for opioid abatement purposes. And finally, Steve, let me understand what the what what Purdue or whatever it's going to be called after this will look like. I mean, you're talking about the operating assets being transferred to a new company with a public minded mission. Does it have a board of directors? Uh, who oversees it? Uh, what's its governance like? Okay, those are great questions. And the answer is, yes, it'll be an all new company. It won't be Purdue and it's unlikely to be named Purdue even, but it's a new company. And initially the board of directors will be selected by the states and cities and counties and so on who uh, are agreeing to this plan. 
and that board of directors will choose the management and so on, but their mission in life will be to do public good. They will continue the research and development on rescue drugs that Purdue Pharma has started. They will provide those uh, rescue drugs at cost to needy communities and uh, cities and so on. Uh, they will, that company will be under the FDA and the uh, state regulatory agencies overseeing pharmaceuticals. So they'll be as well controlled or better controlled than any other company. It will still though also sell Oxycontin, correct? Oh yes. And just let me remind everyone, Oxycontin is a very valuable drug as a painkiller, particularly for terminal cancer patients or people who've been in an accident and, and had you know, severe bodily injury and need short-term uh, pain relief. That's the very valuable purpose, still approved by the FDA. We're continuing to manufacture and sell, but it can only be distributed by licensed doctors writing prescriptions for patients who deserve it. Yeah, unfortunately, Steve, as you well know, uh, 2020 was a, was a very bad year for, for opioid overdoses. I think some 80,000 people, broadly speaking, but much of that from synthetic opioids. It continues to be a terrible, terrible problem for our country, doesn't it? Yes, but whether or not there's oxycontin, the illicit heroin and fentanyl problem is now the headline problem for America to deal with going forward. Uh, our plan is to continue to provide opioid abatement answers, uh, and this $10 billion should go a long way to helping the public health. Right, and then as long as the new Purdue, whatever it's going to be, stays in business, it will still be generating monies that will go towards this as well. Yeah, you know, the important thing is that the money is all going to opioid abatement, to helping the victims and the communities who have suffered from the opioid crisis, regardless of what uh, particular product started it. Uh, Steve, it's been a, a, long, uh, a long process, uh, but one I clearly you're trying to bring to, uh, to an end quickly here. Appreciate you taking time with me. Thank you. David, thank you very much. You're welcome. Steve, good to see you. Take care of yourself. Be well. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.